Hi, I'm Chris Giamo. And at TD Bank, we believe all citizens need to be informed about the important financial issues that affect their daily lives. That's why we're proud to support programming produced by the Caucus Educational Corporation. The future of higher education next on Caucus New Jersey. Funding for this edition of Caucus New Jersey has been provided by RWJ Barnabas Health, TD Bank, the Healthcare Foundation of New Jersey, founded by the Jewish community, the Northward Center, Delta Dental of New Jersey, everyone deserves a healthy smile, Suez, water solutions to meet tomorrow's environmental challenges, and by Kessler Foundation, changing the lives of people with disabilities. Promotional support provided by AM970, The Answer, and by Jaffe Communications, where business, media, and government converge in New Jersey. Welcome to Caucus, I'm Steve Adubato. You know, higher education is changing and evolving every day. Here in the studio to discuss what it takes to deal in the world of higher education, we are joined by four good friends who have been with us before, but I don't think in this uh, uh, composition. Dr. Gene Kornacki, a president of St. Peter's University in beautiful Jersey City, New Jersey. Dr. Joel Bloom, president of NJIT in Brick City, Newark. Dr. Ali Hushman um, is the president of Rowan University in Glassboro, mm -hmm. that is south. South, yes. And finally, Dr. Nancy Blattner, who is president of Caldwell University in Caldwell, New Jersey. In Caldwell. In okay. Caldwell. <laughs> Listen, you've all been with us so many times, and, and I, I've really been looking forward to this conversation, because even though we have talked in different settings about higher education, the future of higher education, Nancy, let me start with you. Okay. Biggest challenge you and you think your colleagues face in the world of higher ed. As a president today, 2018 going to 19 is? Well, I think there are many challenges, but one thing I think that probably all of us would agree upon is that we need in the state of New Jersey a strategic vision for higher education. That all of us, even though we're, we represent different sectors, here you have presidents from public and independent institutions. We have colleagues who are also at the community and county colleges and from the for-profit sector, that all of us have a place at the table to educate New Jersey citizens and citizens from other states who come to New Jersey's institutions for higher education, but that we have to agree working, I think, with the Secretary for Higher Education and others to really come up with a cohesive plan mm. that provides the best options for all students. So let's play this out. A strategic plan for higher education. Take a, someone take a shot as to what that could and should look like. Dr. Well, Ushman. I, I would say that <clears throat> I think we educate the future of America. Basically, these are the individuals who are going to go and take over various challenges and jobs. Therefore, we need to always be aligned with what the need of the state and the country is in terms of the work workforce. Whether they're at the highest level of PhD or a baccalaureate degree or an associate degree, there needs to be an alignment in here. It's not good enough that we graduate somebody, educate somebody, and send them to the industry, and the industry gets a chance to train them to be prepared for real world. There need to be much more collaboration in that regard. And I think that is something that is, up until now, has been missing, that it's not, it's not widespread. I think practical education is important. Mm -hmm. And targeted education is so you don't waste the resources, the limited resources that we have mm -hmm. in educating the kind of individuals that the, the economy doesn't need. What's the point of, for example, if you are in a state that needs, let's say, 1,000 engineers, what's the point of you producing 5,000, if 4,000 of them are going to be leaving some places at your expense, because all of these people mm -hmm. have been paid by the taxpayers to go through education. Therefore, so, that alignment to me is important. Well, let's follow up on this. Engineers triggers a bunch of things here. Um, different, all, all of you represent different kinds of institutions. Yes. yes. Not just in terms of what's private, who's Catholic, who's public, mm -hmm. who's focusing on different areas. Dr. Bloom, your institution in GIT, are you actually sitting there with your colleagues saying, we are training future engineers and architects, or is it something different? No, it's exactly that. Uh, every one of our academic departments has an industrial advisory board. That many of them, of course, are alums, but they play a significant role in their respective fields, whether they're electrical engineers, architects, computer scientists, 
and they give us feedback constantly, not only about what are the workforce needs that they, as they perceive them, but obviously the content of the curriculum, issues of uh, co-ops, internships, apprenticeships. So we have to be, in these days, a very costly education. Everything is very costly. Um, I couldn't help it, but the, um, the CPI went up 2.9%. That's the consumer the price index? Consumer price index. Then there's another index called well, the how much I interrupt you? 2.9%. Okay. That's very high. Uh, we have something in our industry called the HEPI, the Higher Ed Price Index. Mm -hmm. That's up 3.7%. So it's expensive. Year to year? It's year to year. So we can't waste the resources. So to Ollie's point about what is the need, quality, quantity, and what fields, right. uh, as per the state. So the first thing we should be looking at in a statewide strategic plan is what are our business industry needs. Somebody else has done a lot of good work here saying, there are industry clusters that we should be paying attention right. to that have the highest demand, for example, science and technology jobs, as well as leisure and uh, hospitality jobs are very large in the state of New Jersey. So what are the needs? What are the needs now? What are the needs going forward? And then what is the cost to meet those needs? And it varies greatly depending on discipline. So. Absolutely. Well, let me try this. How do you connect, Gene? Uh, Dr. Kanaki, the whole question of preparing people for the jobs that will be out there in the future, the marketplace. But also having the faculty that you need. Sure. We'll talk in a second that you're recruiting a high, a big number of faculty members. And then the faculty is, we'll talk about the challenges and uh, dealing with faculty. How do you do that with keeping, while keeping the cost of higher education affordable? That is a huge challenge. And I think we all experience the same set of challenges in that area. One of the things that would help is if the state of New Jersey invested more resources in supporting all our institutions in achieving our goals. What does that mean? Okay, are you talking about straight up budget crisis? You've got uh, Governor Murphy and the legislature dealing with a pension crisis, public employee pension crisis. Right. Uh, how much more are we gonna send to public schools, not universities and colleges, public right. and, and, and independence? Um, a whole range of other issues, infrastructure issues, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Where does higher ed fit into that equation? It doesn't, and it hasn't, actually. For how long, uh, you think? For quite a while, Was actually. Governor Tom Kane, who then mm -hmm. became the president at Drew University, was he the last, in your opinion, the last governor committed to a real higher education agenda? In my opinion, yes. He was the best governor for higher ed in my memory. Is the best governor for higher ed defined as who allocated more money to higher Not ed? Not just more money, but he gave voice to the needs of higher ed. He understood higher ed. He advocated for our needs. And, uh, you know, I just think it was very clear that he was someone who cared deeply about higher education. If uh, I would okay. say this. Um, our previous governor, we've talked about this before, was not exactly a friend of higher education. You didn't think that Governor Chris Christie was a quote-unquote friend of higher ed? Personally, I did not. My colleagues might disagree, but no, seriously, I did not. I mean, you know, we've talked about this in the independent yes, we sector. We lost all of our aid um, in one swoop. It was all first gone? Year. It was all gone. Uh, the year later, I think it was a year later, maybe two years later, a dribble was restored to us. Um, we, you know, it's, I went from having 1.3 million a year in operating aid to 50,000 currently. What would it mean if Governor Murphy truly was committed in the way you're describing right now to higher education, Dr. Blattner. What would it look like? Well, I think, first of all, there has to be conversation. I mean, I think that we have to come together from all sectors, and we have to see that, as I said earlier, there is room for everyone because students need all the opportunities that are provided by two- and four-year institutions, public, private, research, um, non-research, mm -hmm. and that there has to be a commitment to resources. I think that's critically important. I think that people who can be very well-meaning and enact legislation that is intended to really do good, I'm going to give people the benefit of the doubt, um, sometimes have very unexpected consequences because they don't understand how much it's going to cost us, not only in terms of money, but sometimes in terms of time or in terms of other personnel resources in order to enact legislation. And so I think that becomes very difficult. You know, I was um, a new president during uh, Governor Chris Christie's first year as governor, and I felt when he read his first budget statement and had his first address to, to people in the state, I felt great empathy for him. 
because I came to a struggling financial institution. He and came to a struggling financial, financial institution. State. <laughs> he, he did. Right. And I'm not saying that mm. I agreed with all of his decisions or that I'm disagreeing with you, Gene, because you and I think view yeah. things very similarly. But I will say I had empathy for the fact that, as you've pointed out yourself, there are so many needs in the state that are justifiable and they're critical in some cases. So how does one say, but you have to fund us as opposed to other, other necessary um, needs? And I can only say what Ali said, and that is we're, we're building the future of the country. Yes. All right. Stay on this. By the way, we'll have, we're going to have one-on-one -on -one interviews with all of the presidents after this to get into even greater detail. Joel, I'm coming back to you, but Dr. Ishman. Are you all in competition with each other to engage the Murphy administration, to engage legislative leaders, to dare, I'm going to be crass, to get as much as you can from the uh, state? When, there are, when the totality of resources are less than the needs, it's natural for human beings to, to, to compete. And all of us do it our own way because we must. The, we, these individuals, our individuals, we are responsible for the lives of so many people. Yes. These are people's children. Their future is at our control. And therefore, it's incredibly important for us to do everything we can <clears throat> to protect these kids, to provide them the best education, to make sure they are not in, you know, left the institution with massive amount of debt. There are lots of issues that are involved. So each of us take a different approach to do that. Some of us try to compete. Some of us try to reach out to the governor. What I would like to do at Rowan, I would like to see as much freedom to do partnership with others, public-private partnership, creating relationship with industries, bring them into the equation. Being so more they, entrepreneurial? Absolutely. Which is what you have been doing, and all of you have been doing your own way. This, uh, hold on. You're saying the state sometimes, government sometimes, restricts the ability to be as entrepreneurial as you want There are legislations that she mentioned <clears throat> that are in, the, in, in actions of certain, certain rules that kind of sometimes tie your hand. And, and, and you need, for me, quite honestly, if the choice is between getting a handout versus getting freedom to, to be creative, I prefer the latter. What do you say here, Joel? You have a whole innovation. Uh, you know, the, the, the things going on in your place, all of your place, are very impressive. But you're all about innovation. And so, but, but it, it, with we, the we, state well, we dollars, have, do the have, strings come? Uh, the strings come, but um, we have different, we have our own legislation, which uh, is, is much more forgiving than what happens uh, at many of the institutions. Our legislation just was written in 1995, so we took the best of the best. So we have a lot of independence, whether it's for P3s and, and how we what bond. What does that mean, P3s? A public private public-private partnerships. I, I just want to circle back, though, uh, to where we probably started. Nancy went there first. What we first and foremost need is a rational basis right. for the organization of higher education Absolutely. in the state of New Jersey. It does not now exist. Um, so it's a, whether it's a, strate a strategic plan or rethinking or thinking about, and other states have done this, what do we need in the state of New Jersey to respond to the population of the state of New Jersey, the multiple stakeholders, including business and industry? So um, this administration would be wise. Uh, I happen to be in the Kane administration. We did work on strategic right. plans uh, for both higher ed and K-12 education. Uh, to uh, Governor Kane's uh, credit, he also did help uh, convince uh, our former governor for a higher ed bond act. Right. Um, Governor with, Christie. Governor Christie. Without that Bond Act, I think we all would have been much more vulnerable than we are today. Uh, that was um, for capital. That right. was for capital. It was for facilities. But in order, if you go back, right now we do not have the workforce we need, whether it's in the state or the nation. And for us to continue to grow the workforce, we're at almost full employment once you drop below, what, 4.5%. Right. So, true. so to, yesterday, um, the, economic, the U.S. Economic Advisory Council came out and said, we don't have the workforce. We don't have the, the pool, wow. and we don't have the preparation. The jobs, but the jo not the... We, don't, we have the jobs. But we don't have the... the pool of people. possible mm -hmm. employees, and we don't have them trained in the right areas. So I'll give you a th thought right there. We're going to quick break, come right back, because I also want to ask this question. There are some who actually ask, what is the value of a degree, a college degree. We're going to have that discussion right here, right after this. To see more Caucus New Jersey with Steve Adubato programs, visit us online at steveadubato.org. If you would like to express an opinion, email us at info at caucusnj.org. 
Find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash Steve Adubato, PhD. And follow us on Twitter at Steve Adubato. Uh, we are speaking with four of the most impressive university and college presidents you will ever meet. Um, I promised right when we went out to the break, I would ask this question. Um, a college degree, some question what the value is, <laughs> Dr. Kanakia? Yeah, you know, the evidence, the data is so compelling that someone who has a college degree and, and also a graduate degree is going to out earn someone with a high school. Even degree. today? Even today. Absolutely. There's a lot of myths that have been made out there about the value of a college degree. Especially today. Yeah, you can't underestimate it. You can't. Absolutely right? not. Uh, by the way, well, we, we had Gary V. You may or may, may not know Gary V. is a very successful young entrepreneur. We had him on, and our producers know this. He was a lot of young people follow him, and I was debating, literally debating Gary V. because he was saying it's overrated. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm making tons of money. Instead of spending X number of dollars and having college debt, use those dollars to start a business. Well, and let's I thought, see what happened, Steve. go ahead. Yeah. A 17 and 18 year old kid who has been protected by his or her parents all the life suddenly leaves home. Up until then, everything has been prepared for him. Clothes has been washed, bed is made at night, breakfast is made, dinner is made. Suddenly that kid leaves and comes in here. We become their parents. And we prepare them to become adult, functioning adult in this country. That is a part, that's the integral part of that education. And for people to dismiss that, in my opinion, okay. is irresponsible. Not to mention the social skills. Of all of those, all of those interactions that you bring these kids from various places, the rural area, inner cities, they come to these places where the, it's a very diverse in area, where people get to interact with each other at, sure. at, at the intellectual level. But far more important, they grow. They, it's not that degree, it's not that content, it's not that not certificate. Not by itself. It's a of, is that what it represents? Hell of a lot more. And I believe that's really what, what Dr. is Dr. Blattner, I'll come back to you. I think it's also important to recognize that people, data shows that if they have a, a college degree, that they tend to be much more civically engaged. They yeah. tend to be a much higher percentage Absolutely. of voters. They tend to do much more volunteer work. They're civically engaged. What does that do with college? It has to do with it because during college, just as Dr. Hushman was talking about, we train them to perceive life that way. They know that they need to give back. So that's part of what they do as college students. I think also they make healthier choices. There's, there's um, information that suggests uh, college graduates smoke less. They're less obese. They live longer. You know, these are data that have been proven over decades. Quality of life. Quality it's a quality of life. of life. But Dr. Bloom, you were saying right before I interrupted you, we were during the, yeah. it's not a commercial break <clears throat> because we don't have commercials. Um, well, you said the just, number the, of the Gary V's are the one-off. You know who I'm talking about. Yeah, I know who they are. He's a good guy, he's but a he has a certain guy, point of view. But he's a one-off. Like it's like an NBA player. How many young men and women? <laughs> He's the LeBron men? James of entrepreneurs. <laughs> That's exactly it. How so, it. so the mass, large numbers of young people need a high school diploma. They need a college degree. We again need it for the quality of life and the and the success of our economy. And this myth is getting played out a bit. Yes. We are. If you went back to, I think it was 2007. About 75% of the college students, of the high school graduates in this country who are going to college. I think we're down to about 65%. Wow. So that myth is getting played out, and it's exactly that. It is a myth for all the reasons my colleagues have already said. Yes, we're giving them knowledge and skills, but we're also helping them to grow and develop into full participating citizens of our country. And that cannot be understated. So let's do this. You educate them in a terrific New Jersey-based university or college? Many. But why are we losing so many high school graduates in New Jersey to institutions of higher learning in other states? What is it about us when you've got, you represent so many other institutions that are not representing here. Gene, what's the deal? You know, I mean, I've thought about this for a long time. I don't think it's so. I don't think it's anything unique about higher ed in New Jersey. You don't. That students don't like. Is it New Jersey? Or find. I think it's part New Jersey, not negative, but that it's a very com compact state, high density population. Uh, our location makes it easy for students to go outside the state to college within a reasonable driving and commuting distance, so they're not that far from home if they want. And so it, it's really uniquely positioned to export. Now, of course, the, the larger issue is 
do we have the facilities, do we have the programs, do we have the investment to make going to college in New Jersey feasible, and then afterwards, can they afford to live here? How much is it a branding issue? By the way, our, the irony is um, our producer of this uh, program, Nicole, happened to go to a different institution of higher learning, um, Seton Hall um, and University, and what's fascinating to me is, I mean, Nicole had a lot of choices. Our son happened to go to Fordham, and I, I need to put this out there, our older son. And I tried to convince him to go to a New Jersey school, and he just wanted to be, quote, unquote, in the city. Yeah, yeah. But so there, there, are, there are all sorts of reasons why, as, as, as Jean said, there are all sorts of reasons why people leave the, the state. First is of it all, personal if you look at, for everyone? You know, if you look at the neighboring states, whether it's Pennsylvania, New York, or, or Delaware, within short distance, there are hundreds of universities. Is there too of much course, competition? There is competition. No, I, I, I too know, much. Well, but, but, uh, I don't know what too I mean, much too many is. So many the choices. Choice. There, <clears throat> no, okay, in terms, in terms of the capacity, in terms of the total need for people to be educated yes. and the number of seats, I don't believe there is too much. You don't, you don't believe it's no, flooded? I don't, I don't believe so, no. I really believe. Look, we are now yesterday, throughout the news media, they were talking about hacking and attacking our infrastructure in this country. Imagine the day where you wake up and suddenly your 401k is gone. Mm. The danger that people are facing today right. is so incredible. It's, it's not funny anymore. Therefore, to, to, to not have an army of educated people who are capable, who understand how to navigate through this very complex and high-tech industry and economy is critical for the highest and the most powerful country on the face of the earth to be able to function and function at this level. And for people to say, oh, let's not educate them, we're going to go back to be China. And I really think that's, that's irresponsible. This is a country that is highly advanced. This is where all the innovation begins and all the new industries begin. And only through creativity and freedom you can get to discover, to create new economies. Because look at it, five, between 10 to 15 years ago, 50% of the jobs that we know today will not even exist. Born Who's going to create them? Universities and industry in this country. Particularly with collaboration yeah. with the private sector. Dr. Blackner, jump back in. Sure. I, I think one of the things we have to think about, and this is why we talked a little bit earlier about why it was so important to have the, the funding that helped us with our capital projects. Public funding, state dollars. Yes, state dollars for all of our institutions. And they were critically important to all of us, and in part because the number one reason why students choose to go to an institution in something I just read this week is the campus visit. Mm -hmm. The now, campus visit. The campus and visit. And by the way, every, been to every sure. campus, the, your campuses are totally different. Go ahead. They are. And so, you know, for whatever reason, there is a feeling of fit that students and their families have when they come to a campus yeah. where they believe they could be successful on that campus. True. And so that's why it's so important to invest in our infrastructure. Because if what it looks like, what it feels like. It's, it's clean, it's efficient, it's welcoming, and it's up to date. It's modern, it's state of the art. So that's why all of us are in a race, if you will, and I don't Absolutely. think there's anything wrong with that. But when we haven't had a capital bond in 24 years, my understanding was before the 2012 initiative that the, the people voted on and supported, that's a very long time to mm. allow many of us to have uh, infrastructures that are, are crumbling. I've got dorms that are 50 years age. Of 50 course. years. Me too. And, and, and by the way, because I've been to every one of your campuses, it, struck, it strikes me some of the, some locations or some parts of the campus are incredibly new and, and others sure. are That's not. Because you're you're absolutely. changing them. But we live old too. <laughs> <laughs> it's always a mix. Go ahead. It's, it's always good. a mix. Go ahead, Joel. Um, there are a whole lot of personal factors, including the wealth in the state of New Jersey, disposable income. Second highest, Vice, second highest Connecticut, nation, right? only in wealthier states. But, but at the end of the day, um, we have never, in, I'm in, in high, in, at years. HIT for 20 plus years. Yes. We have never marketed higher education. What do you mean market? This, you all, oh, wait a minute, you all have your own branding. Yes, we do. And by the way, you're all underwriters of what we do. Let me put this out there. And we see your promotion. You're all promoting. But we don't, we don't let the citizens of the state of New Jersey, other than a possible show like this, let them know the richness of higher education in the state of New Jersey, and all the choices you have. So immediately, as you've taught, I've been through with my family, and we've probably all been through, they start looking around. We were just talking, what's the specific program I am looking for? Right. 
there are many, mm -hmm. many young men and women who say, I'm, one of your employees was telling me about a specific music program. Well, that music program is available here that her son is looking at. Is it virtually, is it virtually one, one every your, institution, I know who you're talking about, is virtually every institution, everything that someone says they're interested in, and well, listen, we don't want to turn this into a commercial for higher ed in New Jersey. Yes, we What do. are you saying? <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying, yes. if anyone says, I'm interested in this, I'm interested in that, is it fair to say that in New Jersey, pretty much you can find it? Yes. Absolutely. You Absolutely. agree across the board? Absolutely. Absolutely. You don't Absolutely. have to go California, right. Right. Manhattan. Right. 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 Very few. Right. Very few that we don't have. Right. Very few. Yeah. OK, 30 seconds left. What did we miss? Give me, give me uh, optimistic about the future high event in New Jersey, Dr. Kanakia. Oh, absolutely. Yes. Bullish. 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 Yes, because I believe in the people of the state and I believe in the people who work at our institutions and they will be make the difference. Bullish. I think we are doing very well and we're going to continue <laughs> thriving. Uh, yes, Dr. Bloom. <laughs> Well, you have to be in the industry <laughs> you're in to be an optimist, to be bullish. Yes. But we have miles of work to do, oh, sure. seriously, yes. in the state of New Jersey. We set it, a plan, a funding criteria, uh, yes, a branding, a marketing campaign, a lot of support, including by our business industry colleagues out there for higher ed in the state of New Jersey. I want Jersey. to thank all of you for um, educating so many and being part of this discussion. And I promise a uh, follow-up individual conversations with all the university and college presidents. Catch you next time. Thanks. The preceding program has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of Caucus New Jersey has been provided by RWJ Barnabas Health, TD Bank, the Healthcare Foundation of New Jersey, the North Ward Center, Delta Dental of New Jersey, Suez, and by Kessler Foundation. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. Caucus New Jersey has been produced in partnership with TriStar Studios. You may not have heard of TAVR. Raj and Sandia have. It's the minimally invasive alternative to open heart valve replacement. RWJ Barnabas Health is New Jersey's leading TAVR provider and we continue to perfect it. Patients are often back to their lives in just a few days. Innovative valve replacement surgery. Because you can't be replaced. RWJ Barnabas Health. Let's be healthy together.